Liverpool though we hear closing in on a deal to sign the goalkeeper and we've spoken about this fella before uh, Georgi Mamar Dashvili from uh, Valencia uh, he impressed for Georgia, of course, did he not, over in uh, Germany during the Euros. What does that tell us about Alisson? He's under contract until 2027. Well, it, they're, they're planning ahead, aren't they? I don't know what's going on with Alisson or what conversations he's had with the club, but it seems like they're being proactive in finding his replacement. I was fortunate to see him twice, Mohamed Ashvili, and to be honest with you, I didn't know much about him until I saw him. He's in, he was incredible form in the Euros. Good, big presence, um, Good, the normal stuff, shot stopping and all that. Decent with his feet. I mean, when I say presence, I mean he's what six four, six five or something. Mm. Yeah, he's a giant. So he's. Yeah. It's. I think that's a great bit of business getting him in now. But I don't. I don't know in answer yeah. to Allison. That's question. It would be surprising to bring in a keeper now for what three years time. Mm. So maybe there's been something from Allison which. I thought he'll come in and go back out on loan. Yeah, for a year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's a super keeper. Yeah, only twenty three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has been quiet, hasn't it, Simon? In, in that part of the world, you would have thought with someone like Slot coming in mm. and Klopp going, he might have, you know, well, like strange, we've seen elsewhere. I want X, Y, and Z. I wouldn't have thought a forty million euro goalkeeper was a priority um, because that's not huge money, but it's not small amounts of money. Mm. You're spending forty million on a goalkeeping position that doesn't seem to be a priority. Maybe there's a viewpoint that some could have been sold in the summer and maybe he's going to be staying for the rest of this year and he's going to, he's going to go on a free at the end of it and perhaps Liverpool have factored that into their thinking that they could have got some money for Salah and they're not going to and maybe part of their thinking is that we keep Salah and we let him go at the end of the season on a free and ultimately we forsake the money we could have got for that that might not be part of the letting or maybe they just think looking at their squad despite all of the expert analysis from the, no one that's ever managed Liverpool um, that they've got a good enough squad of players and certainly from an offensive position, I would suggest they have. Yeah. There might be some arguments about the centre of the, of the of the park. Yeah. But again, they've still got young players and and players they've signed in there that may yet to have come to their full potential. <clears throat> I think Liverpool will be fine this season. I think they'll be an effective side. And I don't think they'll win the league, but I think they'll be in and amongst the top four and in amongst perhaps some silverware. In your time there, Danny, you certainly saw eye to eye with Gerard Hooley, but you didn't with Rafa Benitez, <laughs> right? Yeah, kind of. I mean, we, we didn't see eye to eye somebody because he didn't want me anymore, which is normal to not like that scenario, but I'm kind of over it. He was honest enough. He moved he moved some players on and got some new ones in, which most managers do. But yeah, he, was, he wasn't the warmest character in the world, let's put it that way, but mm. he did well at Liverpool. I mean, the fans loved him. He, he won the, I think it was his first season, he got the Champions League. That's so right. He yeah. had success there, you know. Won, can you say? Just because he didn't like me doesn't make him a bad man, does it? We're not like you. Um, he's, he's been speaking to uh, Gary Neville's uh, The Overlap show about his time at Liverpool. And uh, interesting enough, the name Xabi Alonso came up. Have a listen. Xabi had an agreement because I told him, listen, we need to sell. Then Xabi was talking with one club and he had an agreement. I didn't know the figures. Then the year after that you are talking about, we played uh, standard Liege in the, in the precision. Remember that we have Macherano and Lucas in the Olympic Games. Gerard has a uh, lower back problem. And then we have to play Plessis and, yeah. and him. He had an agreement with uh, Arsenal. And he didn't want to get cup tied? He didn't want to. And I told you and I told Gerard, and I remember it because I was surprised, and I will criticise you now. <laughs> <laughs> Xavi was sit down here. I told you and I told Gerard before, listen, he had an agreement, he doesn't want to play, but he has to play because we cannot play with two lads in the most important game of the season mm. to qualify for the Champions League. I told you both, and then when you go, were going out for the warm-up, you said, well, Poor Xavi, like, poor Xavi. No, poor Xavi, no. Xavi is playing with our club at this time. And again, I would say Xavi is amazing. Eh? I don't say anything. But during the season, he was the best player. He didn't went to Arsenal because he has to play. And he has a knock during the World match and he fell down. And I said, oh, I said, he will not play. And after he was fine and he played. OK, um, you've got to concentrate to, to, to um, hear that the way he intended it. But... What he's basically saying was it could have all been so different for Xabi Alonso, couldn't it? He could have been out of there. And what well, he did end up leaving, didn't he? The year later when he when he left. And a grey cloud, really, because the fans loved him and he, he fell out with Rafa in the end. But, yeah, I mean, he's 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 protecting his own he there, isn't he? In the end, in that story and saying Xavi said this and Xavi said that and it wasn't my fault. And But, yeah, he, he, um, he had a few issues, didn't he, in the end? I mean, I remember him... 
having issues with Stevie at one point where he was forcing Stevie to play right midfield for one season, which wasn't particularly uh, what Stevie wanted to do. And then he had the Torres thing where he started bringing him off and ended, he ended up leaving Rafford. Rafford left. But he was part of his strength, Rafford, was his ruthlessness. He didn't care who the player was and what his reputation was. He was he made his decisions and he stuck by him. Yeah. Um, how are things when you ever see Benitez again? Have you ever seen him again? Yeah, I... Um, Did you talk to each other? Yeah, I spoke to him a year later when it had all settled down. I'd left and I saw him at the game when we were playing Liverpool, obviously, and shook his hand and had a chat with him. Life too. When we were, you know, you can't... He didn't spoil my dream of staying at Liverpool from, no, a, from no. a personal perspective. He just yeah. wanted to change things up and it took me a while to see that. You were never a fan, were you, Simon? Respect to say? Um, I'm not a fan of some of the things he does mm. and some of the things he says and where he represents himself. I mean, that that example to me is probably because Xavi Alonso is doing very well as a manager and ultimately to diminish him in some respects might find some way to inflate Rafa Benitez's worth in the marketplace. If Xavi Alonso <coughs> wasn't winning um, um, uh, the, uh, the Bundesliga. Bundesliga and producing wonderful football, I wonder if he'd have been a target for that particular conversation. Um, but you can't argue with aspects of Benitez's management career. I mean, I think it was ridiculous that he went into Everton. Um, I think he was disingenuous at Newcastle and, and, and put himself in a position where public enemy number one was the owner and Benitez was the big hero. And I don't think it was as as uh, as binary as that. Um, but you can't argue with some of his achievements. I he's the sort of manager I, that I would loathe to have. Not because not because I don't rate him as a manager. The sort of basically, but because he's one of those that operates behind the back of those that he works for and sorts himself out and at and the same time as portraying himself in a certain way and everybody thinks, oh, well, Benitez is wonderful. It must be right. And it's not It's not like that. Yeah, yeah. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.